Hey guys, what's up? It's Rigo with Grizz Media and today we're going to be doing sort of a tutorial video on how I managed to get the footage that I did for the gyro data sensor. This is a follow-up video to the first video, so if you guys haven't seen it, it'll be in the card above. Be sure to check it out if you guys want to see how, just how, how much of a difference it is to use the gyro data. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go and we're going to click on a clip. We're going to open up DaVinci Resolve. A lot of people have had questions on how to actually use this data and like how it works. Do I have to turn it on in my DaVinci Resolve camera? So here I'm going to give you guys some basic um, frequently asked questions that are general and uh, you should already know. Um, so the first one is that once you have updated the camera to the 7.9 firmware update, the camera will always shoot in gyro data. You do not have to turn that on in the camera. It will always be there from now on. So any clip you record after the 7.9 firmware update will have gyro data inside of it. Anything before that, you cannot use the gyro data stabilization in post. You have to update the camera to 7.9 and then you can use the gyro data in DaVinci Resolve. Another question I get asked is, um, how do I, how do I crop, how do I change the crop factor when it's using gyro data? You can do that on your camera. Unfortunately, I don't have my camera anymore. Um, you guys can see information about that in our community post that we have on the channel. It's a pretty sad story. Um, so I don't have my camera anymore, so I can't actually record myself shooting or showing you guys that. Um, but we, what we are going to do is we are going to import this clip now. The gyro data can work for 120 frames per second, but I don't really recommend it. Okay guys, so here's the clip right here. We guys can see it's just a standard clip. It looks a little shaky, right? Yeah, it does. So how to stabilize it in post is you're gonna go down here onto the video section of the timeline in your inspector tool. You're gonna go down and you're gonna click on stabilization. It should already be on. You're gonna click on that. And here we have a couple of features. The first thing that we wanna take a look at is the stabilizer right here. After we click this button, it will stabilize the clip. Before that, we need to pick a different mode. We're going to go here where it says camera gyro. This is the new part of the 7.9 firmware update. We'll click on that and we're going to go ahead and click on zoom. The strength of it, you can change um, based on how well you want it to actually look like it's stabilized. So we're going to, I'm just going to show you guys how I did it. I simply clicked on camera gyro. I made sure that this was at one and I click stabilize. And now we wait. Okay guys, so now that the clip has been stabilized, we're going to go ahead and check it out. A really massive difference you guys can see right there. Wow, that is just incredible. Now one thing I want you guys to take a look at right here is that even though it actually looks stabilized, let me go ahead and color grade this real quick. Just, you guys can sort of see whenever I move that there's a shaking in the footage right there. You guys can see there's like a wobble. And the reason for that is because there's actually, the reason for that is because I have this in a standard 180 degree shutter rule. Now to avoid this, you guys want to go ahead and make sure that you are above that. Make sure that you are above the shutter angle that you're supposed to be. That way when you do this in post, it won't actually come out to be a little bit wobbly when you try to move the camera in the stabilization mode. Um, but that is really the gist of it. That is how I managed to get the camera to look the way that it did. Um, the footage, you guys can see it's wobbling. Every time I, every time there's a shake, even though it has the gyro data to keep it balanced, because the shutter rule keeps it so it has normal motion blur, you're going to see normal motion blur when it tries to stabilize it because it is actually digitally moving the image to make it seem stable. That's what the gyro data is doing. You can go ahead and mess around with the camera lock, camera settings. You guys can see that when it doesn't zoom in, this is what it's doing. This part right here, this is what it's wobbling everywhere to keep it stable. So when we click on zoom, you guys don't see that wobbling anymore. And if we actually decrease the strength of it, I think right here, a really cool thing. you guys can yeah, see by decreasing it just a little here, bit, just a little bit better than it, used to it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Really this has been a little tutorial on how to make the, this has been your little tiny tutorial guide on how to do it and how to improve your gyro data. So the main tip I'm giving you guys to improve the gyro look is to make sure that your shutter angle is higher than it's supposed to be in order to have less motion blur in your image. So make sure you guys do that whenever you're trying to use this for that. And I do not recommend using 120 frames per second footage just because you can already make that stable in post and you really don't need gyro data for that. So I really don't recommend that you guys do that. That is about it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this little tutorial video, be sure to go ahead and give it a like. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and let me know if you guys want to see any more tutorials in DaVinci Resolve. I'll see you all in the next upload. It's Regal Grizz Media signing off. Have a great day, guys.